Good evening. Good evening. Oh, very nice. Welcome to the South Shore Cultural Center. My name is Andrea Zopp. I'm the Deputy Mayor and Chief Neighborhood Development Officer for the City of Chicago. On behalf of Mayor Emanuel, I am really thrilled to have all of you here to welcome all of you to this first community conversation and dialogue on the future of Jackson and South Shore Parks. This is an important uh, opportunity, as you know, we all know, we have the Obama Presidential Center coming to the parks. We have a lot of very exciting things happening, but we want to have community input and feedback on what's going on and how we're going to have the planning that we're going to do so we can make this park our park for the city. This is a, a tremendous investment and opportunity that's coming. I'm so thrilled to see every single one of you here tonight. And I'm going to, so we can get going, so we can get through the presentation and then get to conversation, I'm going to turn it over to Avis Lavelle, the president of the Chicago Park District Board. Thank you, Andrea. You have promoted me. I am actually the vice president. <laughs> I'd like to thank all of you for coming out tonight to share your thoughts and ideas. It's an exciting time for the communities of South Shore, Hyde Park, Washington Park, and truly for the entire city of Chicago. We're at the start of a process. I want to emphasize that. We're at the start of a process that will take us into a shared future as we envision it. It will not reflect the vision of any one group or organization, but rather a shared vision that we forge together through the process that engages all of us. Many of you asked that we conduct a, a, a cohesive planning process. We heard you, and that's why we're here tonight to begin that conversation. Tonight's meeting is the first of many to discuss some concrete long-term recommendations for Washington Park, Jackson Park, I should say for Jackson Park and the South Shore Cultural Center. Our goal is to hear all voices and to honor all views of stakeholders and to embrace ideas that create a comprehensive vision. The Chicago Park District, the Chicago Department of Transportation, the Chicago Department of Planning and Development, and the Obama Foundation have been collaborating to address new improvements to the parks and to embrace both parks' role in the larger community. We are in the early stages of this work, but we are eager to receive input and feedback from every stakeholder involved. Tonight's meeting will focus on collecting that feedback, and this evening is about listening to all of us. Now, I know we come to this from many different perspectives and many different views, but we do share a common goal. We came here to hear and to be heard. In that vein, I will ask that we be respectful of one another's thoughts and opinions, that we will allow all voices to be heard, whether you agree or not, that you give respect and you will get respect. Importantly, please don't look to this meeting to answer all of your questions and concerns. It's not possible at this point. We came to listen and get your thoughts on the proposal and the future of the parks I emphasize this is the first meeting and our chance to gather input. We will take your questions and concerns back, research them, and answer them as soon as we can do that. We know that you have a lot of questions and concerns, and so that's why the lines of communications are being opened. Secondly, let me also stress to you that we know it's an important issue, but we're not going to be able to address economic development as a part of the park framework plan tonight, because what we're doing tonight is focusing on the role of the parks. This is a Chicago Park District hearing focusing on the role of the parks. We do expect significant discussion to emerge from these meetings. We will ask you to stay engaged, and we will share our feedback as we can. We will discuss a lot of ways for you to share your feedback later in the presentation. But with that in mind, I want to introduce to you Greg Calpino from the Smith Group JJR, who will start the conversation for us tonight. Thank you, Avis, and thank you for everybody who came here tonight. Um, so I'm Greg Calpino, I'm a principal with, with Smith Group uh, JJR, and I'll be your tour guide tonight as well as sort of through the, the entire process, which really is starting out tonight, has been pointed out. Um, there will be a lot of opportunities and a lot of times you'll be seeing us in this room and others, so again, welcome and uh, stay involved. We hope to see you throughout the process. Uh, our goal tonight, as was pointed out, 
is to uh, have an, in, an informed listening exercise. Um, and informing, uh, obviously, it's, there's a lot of catching up to do. It's been a few years since we did a framework plan for these parks. 1999 was when the last one was done. And um, so we have some catching up to do. We have some projects to share with you, some feedback. So we'll be doing that for the next 45 minutes or so uh, as part of the agenda tonight. And then we're going to take about a 10 or 15 minute break. We're going to move to some smaller groups. There's a large group here tonight. So when I say small group exercises, there'll still be some larger rooms. But you'll be in three different rooms throughout the, the building here tonight. And then we'll spend the bulk of the time, 60 minutes, um, again, spending time listening to your thoughts and how to make these, uh, these parks uh, you know, the best they can be as we move forward into uh, the next uh, 10, 15, 20 years as th that this framework will guide. So why do we do a framework plan? Uh, it's, 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 it's meant to be a long-term document. Uh, this one has done a great job. It's, it's been around again since 99, usually the 10-year document, so uh, it's definitely done its job, but it is time to be updated. Um, these are the partners that are part of the process. You'll be hearing a number of them over the course of tonight, uh, as well in the rooms. Uh, you'll see them around the room as well, too. So uh, these are who we're working with here. Um, and again, the purpose of the project. So this is, uh, if anyone this looks familiar to you, this is the 1999 framework plan. I'd be curious to see a quick show of hands of folks who were part of the process in 99. So there are a handful of hands here. That's good. So thank you for that process. Thanks for coming back. And uh, thanks to everybody for starting the next round of this process. We're here to update that project. We're not here to start over. So again, it's, it's time and we're here to listen. Just like 1999, um, we, we have a number of ongoing projects uh, that, are, that are happening that need attention, that need to be looked at. And so uh, that's really the purpose of the framework plan is to, again, look long term, look strategic, and guide the evolution of the park. Um, some of those projects, you'll be hearing speakers tonight on each of these. Uh, there's some exciting things going on. The Obama Presidential Center will be one of those. Michael will be presenting some of the um, early concepts on that. Um, the uh, uh, future of the golf courses, Jackson Park and South Shore Golf Courses, the merger of those and renovation. Uh, Bo Welling will be, will be speaking on those tonight. Uh, as well as uh, how to tie it all together from a transportation perspective. So um, Rebecca from CDOT will be um, giving you an update on when we're at in that process as well. Um, and those aren't the only things going on. Obviously, there are, again, every year there are a lot of proposals. There are partnerships going on. So again, we have a whole host of projects, large and small, the Iowa building, music courts, uh, uh, Wooded Island, um, bridges, uh, cultural centers that we're in right here as well, too. So these are all projects that are, that are ongoing. Many of them are reflected from the 99 plan, other framework plans as well, too. So those are also things that are all on the table as well as, again, uh, the many other ideas that are out there that many of you might have here tonight. So again, this is the purpose as we move forward in, into this phase of the project, which is to, again, think strategically, think long term, and put this plan in place that's flexible enough to react to changing times, but also has enough rigor in it that we can, we can uh, review the proposals as they come forward. And most of all, that it's a document that is a conduit with the community. Uh, we recognize that these are parks that serve uh, people who walk five minutes or people who also drive five hours in some cases too. So that balance of local, uh, citywide as well as, as national is something we want to make sure that we are doing a plan that recognizes that for the next at least 10 years. As was pointed out, we are just starting the process. We are in step one here, which is uh, the discovery phase. It's really about listening. Uh, we will be meeting tonight. We'll be meeting again on Saturday. Uh, I know there's a meeting at the Alderman's or at La Rabita on Tuesday as well, too. So three chances um, just this week, as well as a series of smaller stakeholder meetings over the course of the next month or so. We'll be back again in August or July, August. So we start getting into some of the visioning and principles. We'll be back later in September as we start looking at alternatives. And we'll be back later in the fall, October or so, as we start getting into draft framework plans. So think about these all as touch points with the community. There's, uh, you know, there's, there's well over 20 different points for larger groups to, to be catching uh, up with us in the process, as well as, again, a lot of smaller ways to do that, websites, et cetera. So again, welcome to the process. Um, again, those projects that are going on you'll hear about, they all do have their own different approvals and review processes. Um, some of them go longer, some of them go shorter. This is kind of an indication of kind of how they, they, that works with the framework plan. Again, it's a great opportunity that they're all at a formative stage here. They're at the perfect point to listen, to be reflected in the framework plan, to let the framework plan guide them. They all have a chance to listen, to be better, and you'll hear that from all the speakers here today too. So it's not too late, it's very early, early in the process, so uh, more to come on those. So uh, be happy to catch up on those tonight. So 
um, this is, again, not the first framework plan that's been done in this park. There's a rich legacy going back to one of the original designers, Frederick Law Olmsted, uh, who really spoke about the importance of holistic planning, looking at how every element works together, how the entire park works, how all the parks work together, both in terms of these two parks as well as the entire system. So that is really the spirit that we move forward. Um, again, that legacy of planning goes back to the age of, uh, of cows kicking over lanterns into world's fairs, into changing recreation patterns, into uh, private spaces that uh, became public spaces in the 70s at, in this facility here as well, too. So that rich legacy of planning is something that we're very respectful of. Um, but we also recognize that each of those plans looked forward. They, 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 they uh, connected with, with the residents and stakeholders, and they, they adapted the parks to, uh, to uh, meet the needs of current and future needs. And that's exactly the spirit that we're in today. So that rich legacy of planning uh, and, and, and the listening to the, the current uh, needs of the community is something that we, there's a good pattern of, and it's something that we intend to carry forward here as well, too. Um, the 1999 plan did have a lot of achievements. Uh, there, again, you've, been, you've seen many of them in the, pro, in the parks, large and small, so again, we're very proud of those. And um, with that, we sort of move into the next phase of updating that plan. So the full study area, what does South Lakefront mean? Uh, this is the general study area that we're looking at, uh, which reflects what we did in 1999. Uh, there, were, there was a parallel document, a uh, partner document for Washington Park done at the time as well, too, that will be on a, a separate track, not part of this. But we're focusing on these two parks that were part of the 1999 South Lakefront Framework Plan. So that includes Jackson Park and South Shore Cultural Center, where you are tonight. These parks uh, have a very rich legacy of, of recreational facilities, fields, and, and, and structures, water-based, land-based, year-round, day, night. And so uh, we're here to listen to you about how these can work better. What's working today? What could be better? What could be added? What, uh, what's the right future for these recreational facilities? You'll be hearing, you'll have a chance to do that in the breakout sessions. The same thing for the, the, the cultural and, and historic legacy of, of these parks. Structures, uh, landscapes. Sculptures, again, uh, those patterns that, that remain today that make these parks great. We want to hear from you today about, again, how can we best celebrate those? How can we reflect those in our designs? How can we leverage those as part of the park experience? And looking at the, the very complex web of connectivity, you know, we, we've gone from carriages to cars, from uh, horses to bikes and joggers. And uh, so this network of roads and, and sidewalks and, and regional paths and water trails and boating, all of these are sorts of things that we want to look at and again understand from you how we can best leverage those. How can we make those work for everybody, whether you're coming to the park, through the park, but also how can they be most sensitively placed within the park as well too. So that brings us to our first presentation here tonight. Um, I'm going to introduce Bo Welling, uh, the um, senior designer of TJR Design here in a moment. Um, but we're, again, this project involves the uh, renovation and consolidation of the Jackson Park and South Shore Golf Courses as depicted here. This shows also where the, the current driving range is. Um, and this is, again, going back to the legacy of these parks. This is something that goes back, I don't know if you're, if you're familiar, but 1899, uh, it was when this initial uh, golf course, which is where the driving range uh, initially w was put in this park. It's the first golf course west of the Alleghenies. So there's, this goes back about as far as you can go as, as an original element of this park. And again, it's something that has evolved over time with trends in golf, with the things that happened around it, with beaches being added as well too. So again, it's, it's been here a long time. It's always been subject to changing and conditions and new equipment. So uh, at that point, I'm going to turn over to Bo to uh, talk about that legacy, this project, and give you some details on where we're at in the process. So, Bo Welling. Thank you very much. It's, uh, it's very exciting to be here. We've, uh, we've been noodling on this idea and, and working on some thoughts here that we're going to present to you tonight for, for well over a year. Tiger called me about a year ago and said, hey, I need you to meet me in Chicago tomorrow. And that was very unusual. It was very fast. And I quickly found out um, this was such a unique opportunity, a unique possibility. And, and he was so very excited. Uh, about the possibilities here. Um, and, it, it, and golf's a big part of it, but it's, it's how golf fits into a bigger framework of, of community, a bigger framework of park. Um, and so we're very excited to, to be here tonight to start to unveil um, some thoughts we have. Um, when we started, you know, the, the previous slide that Greg shows had the, the yellow outlining Jackson Park and South Shore and the, and the range, and so all sort of separate things. And so I think when you first start looking, okay, how do we restore these historic and recreational assets? How do we merge them together? You, you quickly get, 
you see constraints. You've got roads to cross. You've got uh, other uh, land uses. Uh, you've got shoreline issues. You've got regulatory issues. Um, and, and so you sort of focus on that. But we stepped back and we really went back to this slide. And, and knowing the significance of the park historically and sort of seeing where the, where the footprint had been historically off was very informative. And we've tried to work with a mind towards that history. But I think even more important than that, I think what Tiger got initially very excited about was the opportunity to do something here that could contribute positively to this community. And he was very passionate about that from day one. Like the golf has, has been very important to him, been very important to me. And, and to have the opportunity in this incredible setting, historic setting, but in this community, to be able to do something that was positive with golf going forward uh, is very, very special. And so engagement with the community was very important. And so we were thankful that the Chicago Parks Golf Alliance was formed as a coalition to interface with the community, to interface with the Chicago Park District and to be able to, to help develop a program of what might be possible with the restoration and merger of these two golf facilities. And so there's been a lot of interface with the community in terms of collaboration. There has been, which we anticipate continuing to go on. I, I echo the, the comments of Ms. Lavelle and Greg of, you know, this is really a, a starting point and we finally have some, some slides here I'm gonna show you that will allow us to really engage with you about, about golf and golf and its place in the park. Um, but we envision youth programming to be a huge part of this opportunity, whether that be caddy programs, first tee programs, high school programs, etc. And so with all that in mind, we spent a lot of time trying to understand, okay, what might be possible, uh, what's feasible, and what, do we, what does the community want? And to that end, we have come up with a concept plan, and the concept being sort of the key, the key word. And so here it is. So we've, we've, just to orient folks a little bit, we've rotated the plans that Greg has shown such that north is now straight up the page and south is down. And so, I don't know if y'all can see that laser, but the, the golf course basically still exists within the historical context that it had in the, the previous slide. Ph philosophically, we believe that golf should be fun and should be playable and should serve a broad swath of people. I think that's a fundamental tenet of what we're trying to do. We're trying to engage people with golf, to bring them together, to have a positive impact on their lives, and, and for golf to be used as a place for people to gather and get to know each other in a human scale kind of way. So to that end, some big scale things that are going on on this concept plan are that there are 13 golf holes here now proposed in the space where there are 18 golf holes of the Jackson Park Golf Course. And similarly, there's a South Shore area where there are nine holes, there are now only five. So 18 holes emerge under the merge, uh, emerge under the merged sites. That gives us some extra space that allows this area here to be developed into a short course geared primarily to youth and to family. Um, what you'll also see is this sort of gain in space, whereas the existing Jackson Park Golf Course is roughly 5,500 yards, the South Shore is roughly 2,800 yards. We now have the ability to have a longer golf course but at the same time, we're able to have golf holes be much wider. And so if you were to go look out at the existing golf holes and compare, say just south of, of this building, here is a, a single golf hole where there are two now. And so by doing this increased width, we're able to modernize the golf course, we're able to create an experience that's gonna be more fun, more playable, and gonna be able to challenge good players, but most importantly, be something that's gonna be engaging to the community as a whole. So if you'll see over here quickly on the scorecard to that end, we've got a par combined par 70 golf course that from the backmost tees could stretch out to be very long. So you could have elite level tournaments if you wanted to, whether that means the PGA Tour or a city, city tournament or a college tournament, what have you, but it'll be a facility that is able to challenge the best players in the world. But more importantly, we've got teeing grounds that go all the way down to less than 3,000 yards. That 3,000 yard course would be something that would be geared towards juniors and beginners. And so you really are gonna be able to have a situation where it's, the golf course experience is gonna to cater to a, a wide swath of people. Sort of blowing up the scale, this is just the Jackson Park uh, side. And so what is proposed, here's the family short course as referenced before that would operate out of the existing Cecil Parti building and it would provide an incredible opportunity for youth programming around golf that could be year round. We're very excited about that. 
A new golf starting point would be developed here to the northern, just south of Hayes, to the northern portion uh, of Jackson Park. All golf traffic will come here. There will be no more golf starting and stopping out of South Shore. It will all be out of, out of Jackson Park. What you may notice, if you guys are good with maps, is that Marquette is no longer shown here, and that's going to be talked about a little bit later. So that's been a big component in trying to, to make this all function to accomplish these goals that we've been talking about. Similarly, underpasses would be, would be um, developed to get under Jeffrey for safety, um, as well as make that golf experience be, be more seamless. Similarly, to get over to South Shore, an underpass would be developed here that would serve not only as a golf function, but as a community function to help connect uh, pedestrian traffic through uh, underneath Lakeshore Boulevard. This is South Shore, where there are five holes. And we're super excited about these um, because it allows us to interface with the lake. And we come through the underpass and we play uh, a hole to the south, a longish par four to the south. And then the, the lake experience really begins on this 11th hole. We play out to a, a green set on the lake, envision a horizon line green. You see big views in the distance. Then you turn to the north and play a very, very dramatic par three that will make this golf course be world famous because you'll have the, the downtown skyline of Chicago in the distance. We then continue to play along, we, we, South Shore remains open, of course. The beach remains open. So the golfers would finish here and then have to traverse around the beach to start the 13th hole on the other side. But again, another dramatic hole along the lake. Um, and then we return to the Jackson Park parcel and finish back up close to Hayes. The driving range would also be redeveloped. Uh, it would be extended in length, um, and it would be widened. And so the opportunity there is that we can, we can have more golfers on the range at the same time. It will be a more complete practice experience, and it will, it will dovetail very well both as um, a contributory factor to the existing golf experience as well as its own individual place for programming uh, and, and community recreation. So we're super, super excited about all of this. Um, and just to close, I would just say, from the very beginning, it's, Tiger's been so excited about making something be meaningful here. And I think the more we've gotten involved, the more excited we've gotten, the more um, a sense of responsibility we really feel to help the community develop these assets in a way that could be the best serving for the community long term and going forward. And so I just thank you enough. We look forward to working with you. We look forward to hearing your feedback from these closed up sessions and, and, and additional meetings in the future. So with that, I'm going to pass it back to Greg and let him talk a little bit about how some of this concept fits into the overall framework plan. Thank you, Bo. So I think, I think Bo hit this very hard. Again, the, the, how this is meant to be really an integral facility, not just those who are playing the 18 holes, but who are playing uh, not only the, the learning facilities, but also we recognize that this park is already knit into the community. You've got picnic groves next to it, you've got ball fields, you have trails too. So that we're making sure that this is, again, uh, we maintain that balance with golf and non-golf uses. Uh, that includes uh, you know, thinking about how uh, nature and habitat works as well too. Um, taking what's currently a, a fairly, it's a lot of mown grass, um, fairly, there's a lot of old trees, but not a lot of diversity in those trees too. So how can we think about this product as a way to start to um, reforest the park for long-term get more species out there, start to think more, more ground plane, more connectivity of habitat, so ultimately making it a greener course in the process here too, using that wider spacing he talked about to start to create some, some habitat cores that we don't have today. Um, also, again, those golf holes along the water is an opportunity to uh, continue uh, the process of, of reinforcing the lakeshore edge. Again, the, the piece along South Shore here uh, has not been repaired in a long time. It does uh, have some opportunities for repair. So as we look at that, in that integration with the golf holes, uh, there will be a chance to revitalize that shoreline. And as he pointed out, uh, you know, one of the real key features here is something we've been hearing about you know, far before 1999. Again, this is something, the idea of safe connectivity to the lakeshore between these parks, to the parks. Uh, this shows the idea of what a concept of, of an underpass could be at 67th that would connect, uh, again, all those features together. Again, recognizing that this would be for uh, lakefront trails, neighborhood connectivity, as well as golf as well, too. So very exciting opportunity for connectivity uh, as, a, as uh, an integral piece of this, part, of this uh, design. Well, that brings me to our next speaker. Very exciting. So uh, um, thank you to the golf team. Uh, Michael Stratmanis is going to uh, come up here in a second and give us uh, kind of the current status on the Obama Presidential Center. 
Um, but I'm going to start off with a little bit of background uh, again, how we got here. And again, I think it's important to recognize, again, we are very early in the process, um, but yet we're actually in about year three or so, uh, probably longer than that. So we're, we're, it's, it's been a, a long process. Many of you were probably part of some of the community engagement that happened back in 2015. Um, you know, we've had, uh, so there's been a, a lot of dialogue as, part, as, as far as locating uh, the center here, uh, wh where it's going to go in Chicago, getting feedback, uh, again, over a couple days of, of sessions, again, many hours of, of input, as well as, as plan commission, as well as, again, just a, a process to just to get here today to be selected to, uh, to have the project here as well, too. So uh, again, I want to recognize that, again, this is not the first we're starting here, but there's a long way to go in the process. Um, again, where we're at now, again, the, the team has been selected, the design is, is progressing, and at that point, I'm going to turn it over to Michael to show you how that is progressing. So, Michael. We are tossing a lot of information at you all this evening, uh, but I appreciate it, and, uh, and I do appreciate, in particular, uh, uh, Deputy Mayor Zopp, uh, Mike Kelly, who I believe is here, uh, who's the superintendent of the Park District, Avis Lavelle, obviously, uh, with the Board of Commissioners for the Park District, giving us this opportunity to ha participate in this important uh, discussion, to be a part of creating this plan for gorgeous and beautiful Jackson Park. I also just want to give a shout out to Andrea Adams and uh, Elisa Carlo with the South Shore Cultural Center who always come through. So thank you uh, so much for your hard work. Uh, the final thing I want to just say is before I get started is there are some seats I see over there and I see a lot of folks standing. So I could do like church and have everybody stand and move to the aisles, but just make sure that, you know, if you have a seat next to you, raise your hand so somebody who's standing uh, might want to get uh, an opportunity to come and sit down and, and have a seat uh, because this is, uh, uh, it's late in the evening and we have a lot to share with you. So, I'm Mike Stratmanis. Uh, I uh, have the, really the honor and the privilege of running uh, civic engagement for the Obama Foundation and I'm just really excited that we're starting early um, uh, because, you know, we're going to uh, hit uh, uh, break ground in 2018, we're going to open in 2021, and we need you all to be a part of this conversation so that we can get this right. I'm also excited just on a personal note because, um, you know, I, I grew up in Chicago. Uh, my mom was a school teacher, and uh, we, you know, we didn't have a lot of money, but there were, uh, there were parks, there were schools. There were libraries, there were museums, there were cultural institutions that people created that gave a kid like me a chance to dream and create a vision that was beyond the circumstances that I had. And I think that's so much a part of the reason why I have the chance and the privilege to be standing up here talking to you today. And so to be a part of doing that for our kids and kids yet unborn to generations that won't know our names, won't know we sat here, but we'll have an opportunity to enjoy what we create together here at uh, historic Jackson Park. I think it's special, and, uh, and I don't take it lightly. Uh, we've had a lot of conversations. I've had hundreds of meetings. I'm going to have hundreds of more with all of you. So as we have these breakout sessions, if you want us in the Obama Foundation to come sit down with you or your group or your organization or your community, let us know. Uh, but we'll be there. And this is part of, though, this formal community input process for the plan. We want people to engage in whichever way you're comfortable. So some people like coming to these community meetings to just listen. Some people like to share and talk, and you'll have a chance to do that at breakout sessions. Some people don't like to do that at all. And so we have a survey at our website, Obama.org, that we want you to go, and, and that's a, another place you can give input to us. Uh, and continue to talk to us throughout this. We read what goes into our websites. We read the letters that come to us. Uh, there are actually people here today who are here who were invited because they wrote to us. And so we sent them back an email and invited them to participate in this conversation. So we want to talk back to, we want you to talk back to us as well. I think as we get started, I, uh, this is, you know, obviously not about me. This is about the Obama family. Um, she grew up here. Mrs. Michelle Obama grew up in this neighborhood. Their kids were born here. Um, they played in Jackson Park. She played 
at Jackson Park. This is the community that they love and that they call home. And so in creating this presidential center, and we've said this a lot, but I want to say it again, this is intended to be more than just a museum. They want to create and build a living, working center for engagement. And they chose, they chose to put it here. And they chose to put it here because they see the opportunity to turn the tide on a history of underinvestment in the south side of Chicago. They chose to bring it here. They chose to bring it here because of this historic park and the once in a lifetime chance to unleash its full potential and, and for the community to enjoy. And they chose to bring it here to be a part of the work that Avis Lavelle and Mike Kelly and others have done to invest in the parks on uh, this side of town, on all of Chicago, all throughout all of Chicago, so that no matter where you grow up, no matter what neighborhood you're in, no matter what zip code you're born into, you have a special, awesome park right outside your doorfront that you can come to. We want the best park in America to be on the south side of Chicago. And why not? Why not? We deserve it. Our children deserve it. And we need to have a chance to do that and create that together. So uh, let's remind ourselves of what President Obama had to say when he was right here in this room just a few weeks ago. What we wanted was something that uh, was alive and that was a hub for activity for the community and for the city and for the country. As we envision it, it's not just a building we are looking at transforming Jackson Park so that it once again becomes a people's park. The ability to use this amazing lagoon and these wooded islands so that people are actually enjoying the park and their activities in the park. And, and it creates a sense of life and vibrancy. That's why what you'll see in the design involves children's play centers and a sledding hill, because Michelle always told me she was mad that during the winter she couldn't sled because there was no hill down here. It's about hope. It's about belief. Uh, it's about the story that our kids tell themselves. If they see a world-class institution in their community, populated by people who come from their community, then they have a sense of importance. And, and that ultimately is, is what I want to give back, because that's what Chicago gave to me. So if I was smart, I would just shut up and sit down, right? Yes. <laughs> I'm not that smart. And there is more information, though, that I want to give you all, because I want you to be informed as you go into these sessions. So uh, what the President and Mrs. Obama have created in this concept design that they have, and it is a concept design, you know, we're really at the perfect point to be able to have these discussions, because the it's not done yet. It's not, it's not all locked in. This is a chance where we've given some thought. They brought their professional designers around the table, including Dina Griffin, by the way, a lovely, wonderful architect, a black woman from the south side of Chicago who's a part of designing this. And, and this is a time for us to get that input um, from you so that when we come up with what's final, it's better because you've had a chance to participate in the discussion. So the idea really is to create a democratic space, one that's open to all. Accessibility is so important. Accessibility to the elderly, accessibility for people with disabilities, accessibility from the north, the south, the west. This is something that we want to be open so people can come in and out of it to enjoy it. The idea is to create a campus, a campus set around a public plaza. The buildings actually in this design are, take up a very small part of the footprint on the site, but they're important, so I want to talk about it. 
One building is the museum. It's the tallest structure that's there, befitting the 44th President of the United States, befitting some arrival, something that is important for our, this park and this neighborhood. And that is where the exhibits are going to be. That's where you'll see Michelle's dresses. If you want to see one of President Obama's speeches, they'll be in there too. Uh, so the exhibits and the archives will be in there. There'll be up two other buildings that'll be smaller in one story. So one is a forum that'll be open to the public. It'll have an auditorium, a, maybe a test kitchen. He's talked about a recording studio, an atrium, spaces for community events, a restaurant. So that forum will be open and available and accessible to the community. You can see it on the rendering there to the side. And then we're excited about the chance to maybe put in a branch of the Chicago Public Library right there in the center. Uh, the city and, and the city public library are excited about that. This is a neighborhood that needs a library, we've heard. And so we want to hear your reaction. We've heard a little bit just now, but we want to hear your reaction to that idea. And this entire design is a symbol of the president's commitment, ongoing commitment to sustainability. The small footprints of the building, the fact that we're adding green space to Jackson Park through this design, it's important. So let's talk about the site plan and how we're going to use the entire site. The principles that drove this design are one, to give more people more ways to use this park and improve their experience while they are there. To connect and create a more cohesive park, not one that's chopped up where if you want to do one thing over here and another thing over there, you got to get in the car and drive, but one where you can walk through and create one full cohesive park experience that restores connectivity to Lake Michigan. You know, I was over at High Park Academy the other day talking with the principal, and I realized that, you know, the lake is right there, but you know, you don't feel like you have access to it if you're standing over there on Stony Island, right? You couldn't walk from Stony Island right to the lake. I mean, you could, but it's not, it doesn't feel like you can. There's a chance to create a gateway there to the lake, one of the more special, iconic parts of living in the city of Chicago from the south side. And another principle is, let's use this year round. Today was a beautiful day, but sometimes in Chicago, you know, the weather can get a little shaky. It might snow. So we are creating things that have access year round, indoor facilities for athletic activities, and Michelle Obama sledding hill when it snows. Let's talk about some of the features that I want to highlight for you, and then we can move on to the rest of the discussion. But this is special stuff, so I want you to see it. I'm going to try to use this laser pointer. Am I pressing this little button here? Because I don't want to accidentally do the slide. No? Top one. Oh, yeah, I did the slide. I moved the slides forward. All right. I messed up. I'll put this on the side. You can't teach everybody anything, everything. Um, so what I showed earlier, <laughs> was the uh, was a adventure play area. Mrs. Obama has asked her designers to take the best ideas from parks and play areas around the world, around the country, and around the city to create a special, innovative place for our young people to go and play, to explore, to, to engage their creative thinking in their problem solving. Again, people are going to be clamoring from all over to get to this play in this park. And if we want kids, they might not even ever go inside the museum the Presidential Center, right? They can just come and play. And, and that's in, enough for us. That's important. That's something that they want to bring to the South Side. That's one thing they want to bring to this community. Um, the community garden. I had the privilege of eating food in the White House kitchen garden. That garden that was a working garden for the White House, but was also a symbol of how we can teach our kids to take control of their lives and their bodies and their food. She and they are bringing a community garden to Jackson Park, to this site. It will be right there, and we want people to be a part of it. We've already learned from some people who are doing great urban agriculture in Washington Park and surrounding neighborhoods right now. We had a meeting with some of them and said, what do you want to do? And they said, well, you know, we have this equipment. It would be great if we could store it at the community garden. So they've impacted the design. We're putting lockers over at the community garden. That's part of the plan now so people can use it. So we are already getting great ideas from this community that are affecting what it is that we're doing. The public lawn. 
that lawn right now is right. So this is an opportunity for a few things. One, uh, it'll be a wide open space for, as I like to call it, chilling and grilling, uh, for picnics, uh, for throwing a ball around. But the way the design works, it can give a chance for to be converted if we want to do a public event, uh, an outdoor movie screening, or a concert. And so we'll have that lawn available right here on the south side of Chicago as well. Uh, there will be an overlook, and that overlook will be raised up so that, yes, there will be sledding at the Obama Presidential Center. We just drop, leave it there. Why? Because Michelle Obama wants it, and what Michelle Obama wants, finish the sentence. Um, the other thing that we'll have there, though, is uh, one of the things that I've learned, and I want to thank the people who have taught me so much about Jackson Park. Uh, I've learned that it is one of the best places in the city to do bird watching. It's one of the best places in the city to enjoy uh, wildlife and to, and to get away from it all. And so uh, President and Mrs. Obama have asked their designers to put that in the design. Let's highlight the features of Jackson Park that are special, the wooded island, the lagoon. Let's provide an area for some quiet contemplation and relaxation um, and, and create these different spaces for different interests. So I think I, I love Jackson Park today. I love it. It is beautiful. It is amazing. But it's a place where you can do this one thing, right? It has a lawn where you can do kind of a couple things. I think there are other people who might want to do other things there, people who would enjoy uh, bird watching. People would enjoy the chance to take their kids sledding. People would enjoy a place to create a beautiful, vibrant play place for their kids to enjoy and learn and explore. A place where you could maybe go see a concert, but it isn't dedicated for that. It's also a place where you could hang out and throw a frisbee. And so I, I think we are excited about this design, but again, it is just, it's a design. And it's going to need your input and it's going to need your perspective. And as, we, as I close and we go and engage in these breakout sessions after one more discussion, I, I just would ask a couple things. One, I, I'd like us to focus on, uh, as we make our comments, and even add some criticism. Let's focus on what's possible, and let's focus on what's fixable. Yes, we have people here who are experts, but we want to hear your solutions to these issues as well. And the last thing I'll say, and I know this is, this is tough, but I, I, I work for President Obama, and he said this, and I got to echo it. There are all these wonderful things that they want to bring to this community. They are, cannot bring all those things with a six-lane highway running through this park. And so that is going to require some decisions. That's going to require some work on everybody's behalf so that we can do this in a way that makes this neighborhood better and not worse. President and Mrs. Obama love this community. They believe we can do this in a way that will make this better. And in working together, I am confident that we can get it accomplished. So thank you for uh, giving me this opportunity to share this with you. I am fired up. I am fired up. And we can get it done. <laughs> last thing, uh, so I, I have the privilege of introducing your last speaker. And, you know, I, I have had a chance to work in and out of government, uh, and I've been so impressed with the quality of the people uh, that are, are driving this work. Um, Rebecca Scheinfeld is the commissioner of the Chicago Department of Transportation. Uh, she is a tremendous public servant, and I have the privilege of uh, asking her to join this conversation now. Thanks, Rebecca. Good evening, everyone. It's wonderful to see so many people here tonight, and thanks for giving us the privilege and opportunity to share a lot of information with you this evening. The Chicago Department of Transportation, CDOT, is excited to be part of this framework planning process. The roadway network and other transportation assets are integral components of the park, shaping how they function both historically and how they can function in the future. CDOT has been working with the Obama Foundation and the Park District to help realize the vision for the park that you have heard about tonight. 
We're here to listen, and we're here to learn from you. We want to know how you use the park, what opportunities you see to improve the transportation network in and around Jackson Park and South Shore Cultural Center, and what concerns you. We are still very early in this planning process, and we look forward to these contributions both this evening as well as the meetings to come, which were outlined earlier in the presentation. As many of you may already be aware, and as Mike just outlined at a high level, achieving the full vision laid out in these plans will require closing some sections of roadway that exist today and reorganizing the traffic patterns through and around the park. I will go over those details in a moment, but first I will outline our overall approach and goals for the transportation elements in the framework plan. The Obama Center and the Park District proposals give us a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to reimagine Jackson Park and improve traffic and pedestrian safety, expand active transportation options, including better pathway connections for walking, running, biking, and to make it safer and easier for people from the surrounding community and visitors alike to get to the Presidential Center, the rest of the park, and the lakefront. CDOT has been carefully studying potential changes to the roadway network. Based on our review to date, we believe we can develop an overall plan that will minimize travel time impacts. We don't take these proposed changes lightly. We will continue to use our professional expertise to balance the needs of traffic with a consideration for the safety of all the people moving through the area. We know that maintenance of traffic is critical to the economic vitality of the communities surrounding the park and beyond, your communities. The residents of South Shore, Woodlawn, Hyde Park, and beyond need to get to work, to school, to run errands just like everybody else. And we want the visitors who are going to flock here from around the world to see the center and also support new business development in the surrounding communities. This won't happen if traffic is a nightmare and transit options are sparse. So we are committed to doing this right. As a part of all that, we will also be reviewing the new parking demands of the Plan Center and the golf facilities. And we're committed to ensuring that current access to the Museum of Science and Industry, the beaches, and the harbors are all maintained. Finally, as part of the overall transportation improvement plan, we'll be working closely with METRA, the CTA, and other partners to improve transit options, including the METRA station at 59th and the CTA Green Line station at 63rd and Cottage, as well as CTA bus service. These transit connections to Jackson Park and the surrounding neighborhoods are important to serve both the center and, obviously, residents and businesses. Now getting into more of the details of the proposed vision. This map shows the proposed roadway closures highlighted in this pink purple color that we are currently assessing. These would all be necessary to implement the presidential center and golf facilities that have been presented here tonight. I will briefly describe each of these changes so that there is no confusion as to what is or is not being proposed. First, in order to build the center as currently envisioned, a portion of Cornell Drive will be closed from the north end of Midway Plaisance, near 59th Street, down to Hayes Drive. The short segment of the Midway that is currently eastbound between Stoney and Cornell would also be closed. And I'll talk about solutions to these closures in a moment. So we're talking down here, this area, and this small spur. On the south end of Jackson Park, the expanded golf opportunities will also require roadway closures. One is Marquette Drive, that's already been mentioned, uh, from Richards to Stoney, only part of Marquette Drive. Richards would remain open from Hayes to Jeffrey. It is important to note that closure of Marquette and some of these other roadway changes have been proposed in previous framework plans. And this, in large part, stems from the long-standing continuing desire to reintegrate the park removing roads that currently divide up the park in some places into smaller, less functional spaces. The other change in this area is that the Park District has requested the closure of the northbound only segment of Cornell Drive down here uh, from about 67th to 65th, which currently cuts through the southwestern part of the park. Instead, traffic would remain um, on Stony there and accessing Cornell at or about 65th Street. 
Now, I'm going to go through a few slides to talk about in detail the types of roadway improvements that we're studying in order to make the visions that you've heard tonight possible. We want to hear more from you in the breakout sessions about these ideas and in the future upcoming community meetings over the coming months as we continue to lay out our ideas and plans and continue to develop those further and bring them back to you for continued input. First, in order to accommodate the closure of Cornell north of Hayes, we are looking closely at solutions that improve capacity on both Lakeshore Drive and Hayes Drive. These two roads will become the primary traffic connection between Lakeshore Drive and Stony Island. We want to make sure that those traveling through Jackson Park, not going to the park, stay on Lakeshore Drive and Hayes instead of diverting to the west along Stony or further into the neighborhoods. Our plan is to optimize capacity on Lakeshore Drive and Hayes and find design solutions to accommodate the diverted traffic. For example, on Hayes, the intersections at Lakeshore Drive, Richards, and Cornell will all need to be improved to accommodate more turn lanes and new signal timings to support the additional traffic volume. Second, we will be focusing on the east end of the Midway Plaisance, where these roads intersect Stony and Cornell, down here where the circle is. Currently, there are a series of closely spaced signals that don't move traffic efficiently. This area will be reconfigured to streamline traffic movements while maintaining neighborhood traffic access to Lakeshore Drive. And we will also work in this area to improve pedestrian safety and access to the Presidential Center and Jackson Park. To be clear, it is our intention to maintain the connection for eastbound traffic to, along to 57th and Lakeshore Drive by converting the north connection between State, Stony and Cornell that is currently westbound into a two-way roadway. So here. Nearby, we have an opportunity to greatly improve Stony Island next to Jackson Park to accommodate new traffic patterns, the needs of the center, parking, CTA bus service, as well as improved walking, biking, and safety and livability for everyone along this corridor. And further south, as mentioned earlier, we will need to reconfigure the way Cornell operates around 65th to become a two-way segment due to the closure of the northbound only segment. And this is also a recommendation that was in the 1999 framework plan. Down here. Finally, has been mentioned, we have a great opportunity to create new connections within and to and from the park for recreation, jogging, walking, golfing, and biking. The underpass connection at 67th and South Shore that has been on the books for so long is a critical connection we are eager to pursue here. In closing, we are really excited about the vision that has been laid out by President Obama, by the Park District, and all the representatives here tonight. We're here tonight to listen to your feedback as we start this process. I want to emphasize, especially with the roadway changes, that no final decisions have been made yet. Rather, we want to hear from you and use your ideas to shape this plan. So thank you in advance. All right, I'm going to try to bring us home here. So we, we didn't quite make 45 minutes, but there was, Michael got us fired up, though. So we're, we're, going, to, we're going to keep that process going. So we're going to spend, we're going to, we're going to have a little time to get between rooms here. I'm going to explain how this is going to work, and we're going to do the best for the, the, the remainder of the time to have some good, solid dialogue in, in breakout rooms. And we're going to do this. Uh, so you have name tags. You probably wonder why there are colors on your name tags. Um, they correlate to which room that you will be in for the dis discussion session. So if you have a red name tag, I will be your facilitator in this room. So if you have a red name tag, please stay here. If you have a green name tag, you'll be going to the solarium. And Paul Weesey, I'm not sure where Paul ended up, will be your facilitator. Uh, you will be coached down the hall here in a little bit. So uh, we'll go, go to the solarium. If you, have a, if you have a green name tag, please go there. And blue will be the dining room, far end of the building, which is where Valerie will be your facilitator. So just as this is the plan of the facility, so again, we are here right now, down the hall to Solarium, down the hall to the dining room. And at this point, thank you, and we will, uh, we will speak with you in about 10 to 15 minutes once you're in your rooms. Thank you very much.